we're going to need a faster moron if we're going to accomplish anything today. And that means I'm going to need a better weapon. That many resources has got to make it powerful. And incredibly slow to build. To push things along faster, we're going to make a large toolbox, which is a fitting name for most of my idiots. And then we have an epic crossbow, 450 damage up all the way from 40. Now I just need to make the 40 hour journey to the far side of the map. Finally, what I'm looking for. Just hope that I have better than a 2% catching rate. But with a little luck, we'll actually catch one. And we got a second one, and since I made the journey, we'll go ahead and take a third one. And luckily, I already have the materials I need to ride the flying Pikachu. This actually feels a lot faster, so I'm thrilled. This is going to make doing everything so much faster. I think the next thing we need to work on are bigger, better balls. In order to make better balls, I need a sphere assembly line, so I need a lot of ingots, a lot of metal. But it's no coincidence that I can carry 1,750 pounds. Luckily, I literally have nothing better to do with my time. You know what? This would be a great spot for an iron farm. I'm just here smashing a rock, minding my own business, but my bird is going berserk, murdering everything in the neighborhood. There is absolute genocide going on. I literally broke my pickaxe, I was working so hard, and I didn't even get 200 ore. I've also collected enough green orbs to upgrade my catching power. It turns out that these big guys are actually really good for mining. And I caught one on a basic ball. So let's see if I can get lucky and do that again at about a 1%, 9% rate. With enough persistence, you can get anything accomplished. But what I really want for mining is one of these things. So I'll just go ahead and uh, calm it down a little bit and throw balls at it until I get what I want. I've officially captured one, one more to go. Plus my lightning bird is so fast that we've already found enough green souls to further enhance catching power. Now I need to figure out the best way to set up a base between all the stones. As soon as I have one of these things set up, I can put whatever I want here. Once they uh, make peace with the local wildlife, they'll get to mining. Thanks to my super iron farm, we can now make this sphere assembly line, and it is enormous. And it's going to take the whole gang of rejects to get completed in the next 24 hours. And now, for the low, low price of 3 ingots each, we can make hyperspheres. I've also built a furnace here in the iron farm and put a tier 3 smelter on it and look how fast we can smelt. Look how fast we can produce these things. While I'm waiting for my iron farm to make some progress, I'm going to fly around and find every one of these green orbs I possibly can. So after all this time, my mining team has earned me 43 ore and 18 ore. That's quite simply not good enough, so we're going to get in there with our own pickaxe. What we're going to need is a refined metal pickaxe. So we're going to need better refined bars, which means we need an improved furnace, which only takes stone and cement. In order to smelt better ore, I need coal, so we've got to go back to the desert. Luckily, this stuff is pretty quick to mine. Many hours of grinding have allowed me the setup I need to make a refined metal pickaxe. At least this new pickaxe mines coal super fast. I'm also going through the arduous process of making cold resistant metal armor, that way I can explore some new biomes and get some more green orbs. The main reason I want the biggest best balls is so that I can capture things like that. With a basic ball, even with all my skills going, I have a 0% chance of catching that. Which remains 0 even once it gets sucked into a ball. The hyperspheres have a 0.04% chance, so I definitely need some better ones. For now, we're just going to have to settle for a gentle homicide. I'm actually doing a ton of damage to these things. It might also be my electric bird, which is electrocuting basically water. These eels have a great strategy for me though. They basically look straight at me so I can shoot them right in the face again and again. The other one was so intimidated by me, it straight up despawned. So that thing in a weakened state still only has a 2% chance to get caught. So I'm not loving my odds. But you don't know if you don't try. Apparently I'm a little hot because I'm literally on fire. Well, it did at least level me up. It turns out there's a boss version of the flying Pikachu that I like to ride. I'm uh, I'm going to see if I can go ahead and capture one of these. And it's going to be very hard to do with the basic balls that I have. So we'll just go for another brisk homicide and be on our way. Those two right there are exactly what I want to eventually catch because they're the fastest in the game. And returning all the way to base, I've decided to reward my idiots with an upgraded hot spring. But that's not really for the sake of them. That's only so that I can upgrade my base and also make an entire new one. And that's going to be especially important. We're also going to make a whole bunch of basic balls. And then we just need a nice flat-ish area to start building pens. And we're going to use an army of sheep to do it. Look how many things you can fit in each cage. This is going to be fun. And I feel like the sheep are really going to appreciate this because we're going to fill that cage with humans. A lot of humans. 
and he's a motivational leader that'll be great for morale in the cage. Capturing humans is considered inhumane. It might be inhumane, but uh, you should see what we're gonna do next. I don't have time to let you out, but if it's any consolation, things are gonna get really weird for the humans next. Okay, let's see how these semi-lovable morons like their new home. Alright, this is great. The glass is very easy to see through. They still get to keep their guns for some reason. Not actually sure how the sheep got in there, but I'm not overly concerned about it. Now, to try and understand the boundaries of what we're doing here today, I'm gonna create what's called a meat cleaver. Notably for cleaving meat. And that is meat. So I'm hoping that every once in a while we can bring one of our syndicate thugs out to play. I think he already <laughs> suspects what's about to happen. He doesn't want to come anywhere near me when I'm holding this knife. Come on, it won't be that bad. You're going to be meat. I'm starting my very own recycling program. Come on. Come on. Okay, maybe I can't butcher the people. Can I butcher the lambs running around the base? No, I cannot. Now I understand. I can feed the syndicate thug or I can butcher him. We'll feed him first, that way he dies on a full stomach. Have some raw chicken. Probably should have given you a name before we murdered you. But, uh, you know what? Syndicate thugs a nice name. There we go. And we got coarse ammo for that. So they give us something in return. We just need to figure out how to get more people. And this is a breeding farm. So let's see if we can make them multiply this way. It says male and female not present. So I'm kind of thinking you can't breed humans, which is a real shame. Here's a bad time to not have bigger balls. There's a shiny mammoth, but at least we can harvest this thing for experience. We'll probably find another one real soon. Due to my limited options, I've decided to abandon the human farm for now and move on to more prosperous ventures. So with the current balls I can make, I can even capture with a 4% chance something legendary like Anubis. We'll give that a single try because I need to hold on to those balls really badly. But if I did happen to catch this, I would be thrilled because that's a legendary and very, very good for my base. Perfect. And I caught that one so damn hard that the other one decided to take a break from fighting. But at least this one gets to die knowing that its sibling is my servant for the rest of eternity. And the reason Anubis is so good for the base is he is handiwork level 4 and also transporting and mining. So basically he'll be able to work very quickly to get all the stuff done that takes forever. Having Anubis come to the workbench here to work on the balls, it goes incredibly fast. So we definitely need him over here all the time. My goal at this point was basically to capture more of these to hopefully find one that's even faster than mine. I have a pretty decent capture rate of these, so hopefully we actually get these. These are really expensive to make, so it hurts every time one escapes. So far we've caught zero, but there's one and hopefully two. At the very least I'll get some experience and level up, but I'm going to depopulate the zappy birds of this entire desert. I've learned that if I get these guys just to a sliver of health, I have a 100% catching chance with my super balls. I have learned that if I find the black market guy, I can actually sell people. And because I'm deeply insecure, I want to try and get a hold of these jumbos, that way I can ride something bigger instead. Luckily they get a 100% capture rate, even if they're at like 25% health. That one's a muscle head, so I might be able to breed these into something better. 100% capture rate, get in my ball. That one's destructive. I don't think we're going to use that for much of anything. So our little outing has yielded us 12 of the zappy birds. While I didn't get the speed boost I want, I will settle for something like a big bird with muscle head. And using our pell condenser that we built a long time ago, we can actually sacrifice these old ones and condense them all into a better one. Once I have nine more of these to capture and sacrifice at least. But it is, at least for now, a one-star beacon, and it will level up great, but the more we condense, the stronger that's gonna get. No wonder nothing gets done around here. Every time I look, someone is somewhere stupid, not doing anything at all. I've also come to realize that if there is one thing that's gonna make this adventure a little easier, it's an assault rifle. And look how fast it gets made once Anubis gets his hands on it. The assault rifle does 320 damage, which is less than a crossbow, but it fires a lot faster. I have limited ammo, so consider this an honor. One quick shot, 11,000 damage. I think I'm gonna like this assault rifle. These guys are only level 35, so they're not likely to put up much of a fight. The crossbow is a lot cheaper to keep going for now, and it still hits really hard, which is funny. And an Ultra Sphere has a 71% chance of catching him. That's pretty good. Uh, apparently 71% is not good enough for me though. I've literally caught things on 0.15, but 70% not good enough. You know, I was promised a chest, so whenever you guys want to get to that, let me know. Okay, you guys be the dinosaur, I'll be the asteroid. All of the creatures in my base are getting a little depressed and maimed and stuff, so I'm just going to replace them with new ones. But don't worry, we can butcher them so it's not a complete waste. These guys still only have a 3% capture rate, and this is an ultra sphere. That's just not fair. Maybe we'll get really, really lucky though. Okay, luck is definitely on our side because we got one. The main reason I came to the desert was to get more of these. 
These four are all level 50 and they're really, really strong. So we're going to go ahead and ignore these ones for a while. I captured a ton of electric birds, but not one of them had extra speed. But we can at least level him up to two stars at level 50. Yeah, this is also a first. There's a lucky shiny there and there's a lucky shiny there. Of which I will be capturing neither because they're not exciting. The very tip top of the mountain, a lone egg. Maybe this is something good in it. Also, it's a pretty nice view from here. You can see the entire world. It's taken a long, long time, but I found enough green orbs to upgrade my power to 9. So once I find another 29 more, I'll have max power. I'm gonna want lots of bullets for my gun, so I'm gonna need lots of big yellow rocks to make gunpowder. They laughed when I said I needed 2300 pounds of carrying capacity. After that little venture, I can afford 200 gunpowder. I'm also gonna need some quartz to make all sorts of endgame stuff, including even bigger, better balls. I also don't have a furry elephant yet, and I kinda want one. I honestly thought they put up a little bit more of a fight than they have. I actually did it. I've done so many green orbs that we can upgrade our power all the way to max. So while they might not yet be the biggest balls of all, they try real hard. And you know what? Since these guys are so much help for the base, let's collect a few more. So currently, even with an Ultra Sphere and my max level power, it's only a 5% rate. So we got really, really lucky earlier when we managed to catch them like we did. Because I'm going to waste a lot of balls catching this idiot. Yeah, I caught my second one. That feels pretty good. You know, a smart person might have strategized to see whether or not these are breedable and focused on getting a breeding pair. Since I have two of them now, I could potentially breed them. But... We need a smart person for that sort of thing. Pretty sure I also hit level 50 after defeating the last Anubis. After grinding and grinding and grinding, I've got the stuff I need for one electric furnace. Everything at this point should take insanely long to build. Luckily, Anubis is really knocking that time down. And this beautiful smelter is able to make Pell Metal, which can be used to make the biggest balls of all. I already have a lot of the pieces I need. I definitely need more cement and more fragments. So at this point, I am more or less going to be abandoning my mining base to bring this smelting back to the main base because I need electricity to smelt anyway. And if there's one thing I do love, it's abusing the electrical birds. So already we can actually make this many pal metal ingots. I'm only held back by ore, which is actually really easy for me to get. And just like that, we're ready to start making legendary spheres. And those are also our first legendary items. And both Anubises are actually coming to help for once. So that's actually going to get made almost instantly, thanks to all that manpower. I feel like a ball like this is going to give me way too much confidence. That and combined with the fact that I have almost 400 assault rifle ammo we're in good shape it's a slow process so far but it's going quicker than i thought it would considering how end game these are but with just a little bit of running around i can already make another 61 pals which is going to make 12 balls and after all the hours i spent grinding the past few days i think i've earned myself a sword so let's give it the damage test 18,000 seems adequate. I also didn't realize this whole time i could have been using those pals i've been collecting forever to upgrade my pets but now that I have a whole stockpile, I can upgrade these strong pets. Like I've made my Anubis 24% faster. Yeah, I've made my Anubis 30% faster on his work speed. He's going to be insane. And for the first time in all this, I'm going to do something to protect my precious head. When these idiots can actually find where they need to work, this stuff goes quick. That gives me 100 defense and 250 health. But the whole reason I've been grinding this whole time is for these guys. So if I was to try and capture them now, not a great rate. So we're going to have to do some damage to them while they're doing damage to me. But that's why I brought my gun, which actually whittles their health down pretty good. These guys are actually sort of insanely strong considering I'm on like mega easy mode right now. Okay, perfect. I summoned the giant penguin. He's uh, distracting the giant dragons for me for a moment while I try and whittle them down to a uh, successful level. I've also managed to light myself on fire, but this is all going very well. We just need them to hold still for a second like that. I need to not get laser beamed into oblivion. Uh, these guys clearly have a lot of armor considering how much damage this does to other creatures and it does double digits to these guys. More machine gun to the face. Got him down to, I don't know, 15% health. Normal Normally at this point I would pull my uh, other pet away so he doesn't accidentally kill this guy but I don't think my pet is up to that. I'm gonna use my crossbow so I don't accidentally overfire on this one. I need him just a little more damage before I try and start balling him. Okay, with him at like no HP, I saw actually a 25% chance I will take all day long. Can we get more of that? 9%? I don't know what I'm throwing at. So far, he's escaped the 25% chance, but it should be like a 1 in 4, 1 in 10. I don't know what it's telling me. Please get in the ball. Please get in the ball and stay in the ball. The other tricky thing is, it's hard to tell them apart sometimes. They start scrambling around like that, and then I lose track, and I've almost thrown the ball at the wrong one a bunch of times. Please get in the ball. Okay, so 1 in 10 and 25% seemingly are both incorrect stats. Oh, we might be getting them here though. 
Come on, one more. Do we have him? I think we got him. We got our first Jet Dragon, Legend and Divine Dragon. Uh, I'm definitely going to double down and see if I can also get this one, just because I can, although we're running out of bullets for our gun, which is insane. We put a lot of bullets into the dragons. Okay, when in doubt, just get in there with your sword. They seem to get close enough, I might actually be able to sword them somewhat, or maybe not. Well, now I don't really know what to do. The crossbow does some damage, but he's still got 6,500 HP, and I'm hitting for 60 when I manage to hit him. You know what? I've already put like 20 hours into grinding up to this point, I'm going to go ahead and take this as a victory. I think I'm going to enjoy having this one. He's a dragon. We haven't been able to combine more of him into himself, but he does have 11,000 HP. He's also quite good at gathering for some reason. And because he's got the legend, he's 20% attack, 20% defense, 15% movement speed, which is just fine by me. I've already set him on fire. But before I do anything, I need to make him his missile launcher, <laughs> which uh, is going to take a lot of stuff. Now it's funny because to make the missile launcher, which is a level 50 item, you need refined ingots, which are kind of easy and quick to make by this point. Here I am, minding my own business, trying to get some coal, and there's a giant war going on around me. Absolute morons, I just want to get some coal. They probably got some good drops anyway, so he'll die to the sword. He'll actually die really quickly to the sword. This thing does damage. My base is also currently being raided by a bunch of idiots, so <laughs> we're going to send Jet Dragon down to uh, take care of them. I feel like he's probably going to make short work of them, considering they're level like 28. Yeah, he's pretty much already got them wrapped up. There's just a lot of them, so it's hard for him to hit them all all at once, especially at this clunky uh, angle we're fighting on. I just realized one of my Anubises is a lot bigger than the other. Also, they're tearing through circuit boards together. Now, the second legendary item I'm going to get is the Missile Launcher or Jet Dragon. Even with Anubis, this is going to take a long time. Okay, it turns out that Jet Dragon is in fact incredibly fast. I'm a fighter jet. I'm just a fighter jet. Now, we can also fire the missile launcher so we can rain down a salvo from above. I think I'm going to like all the different attacks I get out of this enormous dragon, but I'm mostly going to like the movement speed. Oh wow, I missed big with that one. Yeah, I can also just rain down with all sorts of salvos of different stuff. Uh, this thing feels like it's just going to be maybe overpowered. Like, bigly so. I'm uh, not sure I'm even going to need fast travel anymore. This might legitimately be faster as long as it's only a few stops away. Well, these guys are pretty strong to start the game. Everyone knows what these are, so everyone tries to fight these right away. And uh, we're basically <laughs> destroying them with missiles from the sky. And all sorts of different attacks that just absolutely melt that thing. This speed would have made all this progress so much faster. But I think these guys should be a good test. Those are all level 50. Those are all really strong by themselves. So let's uh, see if we can hit them with a nice fireball and get the party started. Well, so far I'm definitely able to uh, do a lot of damage. But depends on which one I'm hitting. I didn't know I could do that. Yeah, this will take a little bit of learning and getting used to, but I'm having fun with it. And the best part is I can just cruise around and they can't even hit me. They're just firing shots way behind me. What's probably faster is me getting off and just smacking this thing in the head with my sword while the dragon does uh, does its dragon thing. It's a little better at controlling itself. But at this point, we're making these four look laughably easy. My favorite dragon and I have whittled him down to just a sliver, so we got the same catch rate we had for the dragon itself. So we'll see if we can get him on the backside. He was at 50%. He was so close. Okay, uh, uh, that was a really expensive miss, so we'll just do it again. Uh, the dragon's over there dealing with the rest of them. I've only got one ball left after this, so you better get caught. 60% and it still wouldn't do it. That was my last ball and then we're out of luck. I like where this is going. We got a new thing. And look at him over there. He's 3v1ing them. He hasn't lost a sliver of health yet. So I guess we'll uh, pick it up here next time. But that was definitely worth the grind. 